Patricia Highsmith's classic novel, The Talented Mr. Ripley, has been adapted for several big and small screens. The most recent is Ripley, an eight-part lavish black and white series on Netflix that stars Andrew Scott as the most notorious fraudster in history. One could argue that, at over eight hours, Ripley is the most authentic adaptation of Highsmith's novel, with ample time to delve into the details of Tom Ripley's Italy-spanning scam without much need for exposition. However, as the program draws to a conclusion, it decides to make its original finale a bit less confusing while also leaving room for a possible comeback. How is the conclusion of Ripley set up? There's a lot to cover, so before we get to the conclusion, here's a refresher on Ripley. Living off small-time hustles, Tom Ripley is a low-level con artist in New York until Herbert Greenleaf, a wealthy businessman, approaches him, thinking Tom is a college buddy of his son Dickie, in an attempt to persuade Tom to return home. Herbert wants him to travel to Italy, where Dickie is spending his time with his lover Marge. Upon arriving, Tom stealthily enters Dickie and Marge's life, using his amiable charm to stay until they get weary of him. Tom kills Dickie on a boat, sinks his body, and assumes his name as he flees, realizing that his meal ticket is about to expire. He encounters Dickie's buddy Freddy while living his deception, reaping all the material perks, but Freddy is instantly suspicious and threatens to contact the police. After killing Freddy, Tom presents his body as the victim of a botched robbery and leaves again, but not before the police discover the bloodstained boat he used to kill Dickie. By the time of Ripley's climax, Tom is effectively taken into Dickie's persona. He even engages in conversation with the authorities in an attempt to sow the idea that Dickie would kill Freddy before taking his own life or fleeing. After Rome and Atrani, the finale takes us to Venice, the last destination on Tom's Italian tour. By now he's reclaimed his own identity and is waltzing around Venetian high society, as the companion of the most known fugitive from the gossip columns. What transpires after Ripley ends? Mars's reappearance might be the beginning of Tom's trick. He had been gradually ending their relationship by pretending to write her letters as Dickie. Inspector Pietro Ravini, a dog with a bone who believes Dickie's narrative has a nefarious underbelly, arrives with Marge. He had already spoken with Tom during the series while he was cosplaying as Dickie, so when they reunite as Tom in the finale, Tom will need to put on a sort of suspension of disbelief style disguise. When Tom runs across Reeves at one of the gatherings he's been invited to, they present themselves as art dealers, giving one other a knowing wink at being covert con artists. John Malkovich portrays Reeves, which is a great last act easter egg as he was the well-known Tom Ripley in the 2002 movie Ripley's Game, which is an adaptation of Highsmith's third Tom Ripley novel and follows our hustler as he embarks on a new life of scamming in France. Tom believes the game is over when Marge discovers Dickie's rings in a drawer in his flat and is ready to kill her with an ashtray. But she views the rings he has as evidence that Dickie gave them to him as a present even though she knew he was about to commit himself. Then, we go back a few months to when Tom, assuming the name of Dickie once more, writes a letter to his landlady in Rome, suggesting that he has no intention of going back. Dickie Greenleaf's case is formally closed with the assurance from Marge, the letter to the landlady, and the assembly of a fabricated narrative from Tom to Dickie's father, portraying him as a killer who committed suicide out of shame and remorse. Does the novel's finale correspond with Ripley's? Both yes and no. The heart of the novel's uncertain ending is retained in the series, while some elements are changed. In the novel, Tom escapes to Greece free, but he returns permanently scarred by the fear that the cops may arrest him at any time. We don't know Tom's fate at the end of the show. But he takes on a new identity thanks to Reeves, who helped him obtain a British passport by using the alias Timothy Fanshawe. He surrounds himself with the mementos of his con, including the Picasso he took from Dickie and the ashtray he used to kill Freddy. The image pans to the Italian painter Caravaggio, who is shown staring at his own paintings while still covered in blood. Over the course of the series, themes relating to the painter, his violent and paranoid art, and Tom's affinity for them recur. Caravaggio had a turbulent life filled with near misses before murdering an aristocratic family's son and receiving a death sentence. In the end, he lived in exile, moving across Italy in an attempt to avoid his destiny. Inspector Ravini receives a copy of Marge's Atrani, which she has been writing throughout the series, in the series' conclusion scene. She included a photo of Dickie with the dedication of the book to him. The episode ends with Tom looking into the camera and Ravini realizing that the Dickie he believed he had met was actually Tom. Will season 2 of Ripley air? Although Tom's destiny is left vague in Highsmith's work, we do know that he continues to lead a life of bougie deception because of the four volumes she published later, collectively referred to as the Ripley ad. The show ends on a more dramatic note, but in Ripley's life, many people fall for his scams while he's just out of reach. Even if a second season is improbable, we wouldn't mind watching Andrew Scott traverse the remainder of the continent like a shady travel show. Thanks for watching, and if you're new to channel subscribe and click the bell, so you don't miss out latest videos of Media Breakdown.